Look, look how white my teeth are. They look good? Yeah. Welcome to Palette Expanders. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 15. Woo! We're here to clean some teeth. No, I mean, drink drink some meat. Drink some meat. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, that's what we're doing. That's tonight. what we're doing here. Got it. <laughs> I've got two meats in front of us. Here's BC's on the screen. Don't know what it is. In typical BC fashion, there is no indicator of what on earth this don't is. Don't look at the bottom. Oh, 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 sorry. Don't look at the bottom. Okay, okay. There might be an indicator. Mine, I had to do a lot of J-rigging, because yeah. I do have a label. This, you still know what it is, which is impressive. Labels, schmables. <laughs> Who needs them? <laughs> Who needs them? We don't the need no Commercial means, labels. you hear that? Just stop putting labels on things. Yeah. Just, just ship out an uh, <laughs> unlabeled bottle. A couple of letters on the side of the Sharpie. You'll figure it out. The public will know. So we have our both both of our meads. We're gonna open them and taste them and attempt to figure out what we've brought each other. And let's see what happens. Love it. Let's go. Okay. Uh, all right. I'll pour. Yeah. You pour yours. I'll yeah, pour yeah. mine. Yeah. And then we can do a little a little mead swap as they well, say. Well, maybe I remember this being darker than it was. <laughs> this is not as dark as. That's what I was gonna say. It, just looking through the bottle, it looks crystal pretty. clear. Yeah, yours is. You've got you've got some reds Oops. going. Do a little spill in the bar top here. That's all right. No worries. We got bar, <laughs> ready. bar rags back here. Well, right. obviously colors. I got mine's very gold. Mm -hmm. um, yours is a very ruby, uh, purpley. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's hard to see through, but I think it's still clear. Oh, it's clear, buddy. It's clear. It's just. It's just. It's just dark. Dark. Yeah, it's a very, it's very, very dark. All right, we're gonna check some aromas and see what's going on. You wanna start with yours and mine? Let's start with yours. Yours right. looks like it's gonna be a little more delicate. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that, got, that got me off guard. Oh. That was fun. <laughs> I love that. Did you know that was gonna happen? Yes, I did. It was very fragrant. <laughs> this one's not a... Wow, that smells like laundry detergent, <laughs> like, like fabric softener. I'm expecting like a little anthropomorphic teddy bear to come out and give me a nice Pulled snuggle. <laughs> <laughs> wow, man. What do you get? So you get laundry detergent? It is soft and flowery and soapy. Uh-huh. Kind of. Mm, stale is not the right word for it. It's not vibrant. Mm. It's not fresh and and bright and exciting. It's very like velvet. Yeah. It's yep. like I feel that. Yep. It's inter the nose is like not normal. No. No, it is very no. like to this, me. This is one that if if we were at Mead Stampede, yeah. <laughs> people would be passing a glass around like, and just say, just smell it. Just smell it. What's just going on it? here? Well, I'm curious to see what taste is like after all that, but that's weird, man. Um, I will say it doesn't smell undrinkable. I don't smell it, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, oh. it just is. It just it's it's different, <laughs> intense. Yes. There's a, an intensity to that. Okay, let's all go right. switch over to yours. Okay. Ooh, we got a berry, uh, like oak. It smells like a berry bomb. To me, I've been making some of these recently. Yeah, and I'm I'm kind of having fun with it. Honestly, it's a lot of fun. It's really expensive. <laughs> it's very expensive. Very expensive yeah. to make all this, but it's been a lot of fun. It's got a ton. Got some like deep grapey, um, dark note there with like some like oak and a ton of sweetness. Yeah, that smells great though. Yeah, I can, I'm still detecting just like a touch of heat. Yeah, I was, I was gonna say, a body, or not body. Heat-wise, alcohol, there is a presence, and I think it, to me, even before drinking this, I can tell, just based off the nose, it is gonna be big. It's gonna be like boozy. Uh, not boozy, but high ABV. Because it's really hard to get something this one, you know, yeah. <laughs> leggy, yeah. but also fruity aromatic-wise, uh, without having a little bit of heat sometimes. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. that's not a bad thing. So, so do you want to start with mine? I think so, I think. <laughs> okay, are you I, sure? I, yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah. I think Even after the... Gonna... I'm going to sniff it a little bit more okay. just to, like... Reacclimate yourself? Yeah, acclimatize my palate. Okay. Oh, it smells so weird. This is two years old as of today. Not today, but as of this month. 
Oh, because I know that because my labeling. Mm -hmm. This is the longest pause BC's <laughs> ever had in palate expander's this history. This tastes familiar. Um, this tastes like chamomile. It tastes like chamomile tea. Interesting. Okay. Um, it's herbal. It's very floral and it's more dense than you would imagine. Mm -hmm. Like it's got some mouth coating qualities it is to it. A little bit chunky. A little chunky. <laughs> the pause was great. I love that. <laughs> it's the, am I, I was like accessing my database and pulling down <laughs> files. <laughs> um, honestly, what this <clears throat> reminds me of is Mandy from Faywood Mead and I did an ingredient swap one mm. time. And um, she sent me a bunch of uh, chamomile tea. And so I like used all of it in yeah. one gallon batch, right? And that's what I'm picking up is that like herbal, kind of like hay field, sweet tea kind of okay. flavor. Interesting, interesting. I'm not picking up <clears throat> like a, a fruit. It's The acid is higher than what I was expecting. Yeah, yeah, the nose is really soft. You'd expect it just to be blankety. You know? Like it is tart. Yeah. It's tart once you get in there. Yeah. And so I could guess that at what what's bringing that acidity it's either likely it's either a fruit or it's uh, mm -hmm. balancing on the other end of it i don't love it <laughs> i've drank most big, of it i'm not a i'm not a big fan of it but i don't love it it is odd it, i will say it is odd it does have a lot of things in it i mean there's a lot of flavor profiles and it mm -hmm. like it's bouncing but it's not ever like landing somewhere it's kind of just kind of going yeah yeah it's, uh, I think you call that angular, where it's kind of like a trapezoid in your mouth, and yeah. as it moves around, the points hit you uh, differently yeah. mm -hmm. in your mouth. Interesting. Okay. Shall we? Shall we? We shall. We shall. We shall. <laughs> <laughs> here, here. Shall we? We shall. <laughs> I need a monocle for this part. <laughs> Ooh, it is a big change. I need my yeah. pal to adjust. Mm -hmm. Sort of had a little water, something between some oyster crackers. I still have a million of them for my test. <laughs> yeah. I'm going back in. Very grapey of varietal, very like, yeah, I'm getting like a, a, a piment profile that is well, I, the oak is not apparent on the taste, mm. but I can tell there's some oak on the nose. It is very jammy. It's very big. There's a little bit of that heat riding on top for sure. And this like acidity is like mellow, mellow acidity coming out of this thing. Yeah, there's like, it's interesting. Sometimes, you know, when you taste something, mm -hmm. I feel like it goes either direction of the taste dissipates quickly or, you know, something about it changes or it just kind of goes like this and falls off. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes it goes and keeps going up. <laughs> and you're like, what's going on here? You know what I mean? Uh huh. This is just such a long lingering taste mm -hmm. that it doesn't feel like it goes down or up. It's just kind of riding along. And the like acidity is the same. And sometimes I feel like when I taste things, that acidity is what really peaks up. Yeah. You know, that acidity, it pops up at the end and you're like, oh my gosh. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. And this is just a pretty constant, and maybe that's a testament, a testament to it not being uh, too acidic. It's just mm -hmm. consistent. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah. The thing that oh, I am has... getting like a, um, I don't know. My my, I need to get my tasters down between grape and berry because I've got a little bit of a mix between right now. Yeah. And it's like, I said grape at first, but now I'm getting like blueberry. Um, profile like that earthiness coming through okay i i wish that the honey character was more pronounced in this i'm feeling like you're getting everything else in this yeah but the honey is not punching through and i kind of want that at the end yeah i want that rich dense acidic 
thing, but then I want it to like at the end with uh -huh. honey. And it, this, I would agree. I think it is very fruit forward. Mm -hmm. That's not. I mean, it's not bad. It's it's good. It does need a little bit of that honey, I think, to yeah. restore you know that kind of character. Mm -hmm. But I do. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take a stab. Okay. I'm not totally confident because I, I don't know why, but my brain is now colliding grape and berry, like blueberry kind of profile. And it shouldn't be because those are different, but somehow I've kind of got this like wires crossed. And so I'm in between these blueberry. I get like a mixed berry. Maybe that's, maybe the combination of the berries is like throwing my palate off and going, hmm. You gonna take a guess? I'm gonna guess at yours because I have no idea what's in it. <laughs> so I'm gonna guess based on the acid that this is some kind of. <sighs> it's gonna be a really big close up on your mouth. Right yeah. <laughs> I have no idea, honestly. This is one of the weirder things I've tasted. We're gonna go with chamomile. I think that's third time you said this on the show. <laughs> I'm on a um, roll. <laughs> You have a track record. Yeah. Uh, chamomile lemonade tea. Okay. Um, uh, mead. I'm gonna bet. I'm gonna guess. I'm going away from grape. Okay. I'm gonna go. I'm mixed berry profile. There's some complexity in there, and that is, I think, was throwing my brain off, and somehow adding some grape acid elements in there. Mm -hmm. I think those acid elements are like a mixed berry, like a raspberry, blue, blueberry, blackberry kind of profile, with. Uh, a lot of this fruit mm -hmm. and a lot of honey and um, some oak of some sort, but it's hard to pick out anything past that. Interesting. I know. I could be wrong. <laughs> Might need to go back and work on my tastings, but I want you All reveal. Right. I'll reveal. So I, and I may have brought this on palate expanders before. Uh, I can't remember, but it's, it's, been a year, I think, since I've tasted it. This is a technically no water tart cherry mead. Oh. Made with tart cherries from Anna's think... aunt and uncle's tree. Hmm. And then, uh, so what we did was like a cold maceration, pressed them in, in the wine press, mixed hmm. that juice with honey, fermented. But the, the thing I think that might be throwing you off is that this was part of an experiment in not using stabilizers, but still trying to create a sack style mm, yeah. mead. So there was erythritol and lactose oh, and maltodextrin and vanilla extract. Okay. And all of this stuff in there to try and heft it up. I think lactose was in there, double checking on that. Uh, but we did all this stuff to kind of like thicken and Damn. dense it, yep. uh, increase the density. It's, it's thick. <laughs> um, but I, th I think where, where that process fails and where stabilizing or maxing out your yeast is more advantageous is that you lose that honey character trying to, yeah, trying. Trying to pull in that sweetness with erythritol. It kind of thins it out. Yeah. And it doesn't really enhance the honey character like just using honey does. I really need to spend more time with cherries. I do, that is one of my, you know, if I had a chart of fruits that I've used the least, mm. cherries is like probably top three. Yeah, it's it's tough to do cherry well. I've done it a few times. I, I agree with you. I think that's one that like needs a little bit more exploration. I think a lot of people with cherry lean into other flavors. Yeah, like you know? chocolate cherry, stuff like that. And right. you never really just go true right. cherry. And uh, these were really great cherries. I just don't love the process. If I was gonna do this again and, and harvest another 50 pounds of cherries, I think I would do it the more modern way and, and use stabilizers and use a bunch of honey in the back end and really heft it up that way. But I'm not unhappy with it either. You got me. That's where the it's first time this is happening. 15 I, episodes, you got me. And I don't- I've got every other one right. You should go back and yeah, watch them. Yeah, you should watch them all. Because you can just see, I've got every single one right. Binge watch it. To the detail, to the- Yeah. The ABV and the first time. Uh, it's, this was a tough one because the, the way the process worked really obfuscates the flavor profile. Right. In a way that- But I, that main profile of cherry is there. And as you're saying it, you know, every, hindsight's 2020. So yeah. I, I do pick that up. But still, I'm, you know, a struggle. And I think that's a lack of 
um, experience with cherries and you know I've, I eat cherries but I'm not like you know every day popping them cherries yeah. so all right so you ready for mine <laughs> I'm not you are not right at all oh I didn't think so what is this this is a from my um, can it be a mead series that mm. I ran a long time ago? Of course, ago. of course it is. Span those wheels. Span? Spun? Span them. Spanded those wheels. And um, the profile here is pumpkin blossom honey, plum, and cinnamon. I don't pick up <laughs> any plum or cinnamon. I guess I, I pick up the acid from the plum, but cinnamon I, I don't pick up at all. All weird profiles. There's some... The cinnamon's there, of course, but then you have plum or pu pumpkin blossom honey, which has baking spices. There's a smorgasbord of craziness there, and so that's really Where does that really trying to throw aroma come from, though. I don't know, man. That's wild. The aroma doesn't smell like any of those things you described. Nope. That's weird. Well, we failed. We, we both failed. On failed. This, episode. this is the first time for him too. So uh, yeah. as you're watching back, you'll see we've been Super really tasters. good at this. Yeah, we're, so. we nail it every time. If you want to check out the previous 14 uh, with BC and I tasting these things, you can find that on the channel. If I'm the doing the most channel, if you don't already watch him, you should be watching him. Most of the people who watch this are crossovers, so Probably, they, yeah. they see both of us. But if you'd like to do this with your friends, we want to hear about it. That'd be super fun. Yeah. I want to hear comments more, about it. I want to hear more stories about, yes, I took a bottle of my buddy and we did a swap and I, we did this. Show, tell us about it. We want to hear about it. So we'll see you in episode 16, unannounced. Maybe 2025, who knows when that'll come out. <laughs> we'll see you then. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.